All right, what's going on guys? I got my man Tay in the chair. He is fresh out of barber school. He's coming in today to get a cut. We just met. He is from about an hour away from me watching the channel one day and realized that I was right here. So immediately I told him, come on, let's do a haircut. So I got a bunch of clippers to test out. We could do a tutorial, but I think what's going to be best for you guys is just to kind of interview him on his barber school journey, where he went to school, how much it costs, what he liked about it, what he didn't like about it. We're just going to kind of talk while we're doing the haircut and hopefully it brings some value to you guys who are looking into barber school. So let's get right into this cut. All right, what are you trying to do? Um, honestly, I mean, I'm interested in doing just a normal mid fade, but okay. I'm also slightly interested in doing a burst fade, okay. but I don't really know what kind of shape would work for me. Yeah, you don't have a lot in the back, but yeah. we could we could start it rounded in the back and connect in and kind of take some of this off so it's not so long here and so short here, kind of even it in, mm -hmm. still leave you some length in the front yep. and do a little bit of a burst. Yeah. Want to do that? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so first off, where did you go to school? And uh, we already kind of was talking about it, but why did you choose that school or, uh, you know, just the, the situation when you were going into looking into going to barber school, kind of have that Look. Yeah, so I, uh, I was fresh out of high school when I was looking at schools and, uh, you know, it's there was really only one school around. It was uh, JC's Barber College in Bowling Green. And so it was really the only option. The next only the next closest was uh, was uh, Louisville. And so I ended up choosing that one. I went and visited and uh, next thing you know, I was, I, I was in there. Yeah, so we were talking about it. I actually went to barber school in the same city that he went to, but my school is now closed. So now that school that he's at, which was opening while I was in barber school, is the only school left in town. So uh, what did, I, I, like I said, I went to school 10 years ago. So I paid about, I think it was like 8,700. So what does barber school cost these days? I actually slid in there at the perfect time. It was 11 grand for me. Okay. And literally just a month after the price went up to 12, and then two months later, price went up to 14, just yeah. because so many people are trying to get in. Like, okay, I was about to ask, like, why the heck is it going up like that? Yeah, this is the, it's the only school, like I said, is um, the next closest is probably Hopkinsville or Louisville. And so if you're in the area and want to go to school, that's where you got to go. And yeah. he's, he's getting calls every uh, every other day trying to get uh, people trying to get in. And so price just went up. Yeah, I guess it, uh, you don't think about that. Like, with barber, it's just like a barbershop. Like, I raised my prices when my demand went up. I guess you just don't think about that with barber schools. But funny enough, Enough, like now we have a school here so I've been complaining for years because say say you're my client you're sitting in, so JT was a client right who we were talking about and uh, you know the time comes where he's like man I'm thinking about going to barber school what do you think and I have to tell people well you're gonna have to drive all the way to Bowling Green every day which is what I did and that's difficult I mean same scenario you were in you weren't living right in Bowling Green but close yeah and like, if you wanted to go elsewhere, you were gonna have to drive like deep or move or whatever. So I know that's a difficulty for a lot of people. Uh, luckily now we have one here. So like I have a cousin, he's mid twenties, just never really found his way or his thing. And I just kind of kept encouraging him. I was like, dude, go to barber school and I'll give you a spot. So he's able to go here now, which is obviously like good for him. Yeah. So probably 10, 11, 12,000 is probably gonna be the standard, mm -hmm. I would imagine. Maybe, I think some of the guys that went in Evansville here, it was like 15. Did you do any type of financial aid? Did you pay your own way? No, I went straight up. See, the school that I go to is actually just, uh, they, they take monthly payments, and so okay. they don't they do not do financial aid. I know that many do, but this one didn't, and so it was, uh, uh, at the time when I got in, they would they would take mon minimum $600 a month okay. until you paid your way off, and now I think it's about 1,000 a month, so. So how'd you do that? Uh, yeah. Fresh out of high school, going yeah. to school all day because we got to go during the day, uh -huh. 40 hours a week. A lot of guys that I was in school with, I mean, they just worked second, second shift jobs okay. and they'd leave yeah. there at 2 o'clock. I actually did, um, I worked all weekends. I was doing um, painting and drywall. And okay. so, uh, up here in Owensboro, actually, quite oh, really? a bit, and so I do that. And you all just week. now came in here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I worked at B Dubs. I was a server at night. Wow. And I think that's a struggle for a lot of people, and I think opposite of your situation, a lot of people that go to barber school are older and, and later in life. A whole different. And it's story. kind of something new, you know. But yeah. a lot of people I talk to that are interested, like imagine you're a full time painter and drywaller during the week. It's like, how can I go to barber school and keep my job? You know, there's not really, a lot of the time there is no way for you to do that. And you have to, you know, I was actually a manager at B-Dubs, quit managing, became a server so that I could go to school. So you know, that's a difficulty for a lot of people. But you know, there's obviously, like you found out how to do it on the weekends and mm -hmm. still be able to go. Uh, but that's obviously tough for some people and some people are unwilling to, you know, you look at like, oh, I'm gonna become a server. You know, I remember I had a guy look at me and was like, you're gonna quit being a manager? <laughs> 
to go to barber school, and you know they just didn't see the vision. Uh, but I know that's difficult for a lot of people. So yeah, I've seen I've seen a lot of different situations. I've seen some older guys who were able to just completely save up and make sure that they were well off and, and didn't have to work, and they yeah. they set aside some money and were able to go to school for ten months. And so on the opposite end, because you wouldn't yeah. have really been able to do that at no, your age, I had no and, money, and your situation. Yeah, yeah. So big difference, but there's obviously ways to do it, and that's kind of what I tell people is like, look, like if if it's what you want to do, you're gonna find the way. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not gonna let like being a server, like the pride of quitting your job or whatever, get in your way if you really want to do it. Would you say that, uh, well, let me just say this, like, what did you like about your school? What did you not like about it? What I really liked about my school was uh, being around, I really enjoyed being around other guys who were, I mean, on the same journey as you. I mean, yeah. uh, that's that's the thing about barber school. Like, I mean, when you talk about college or, or high school, I mean, everybody's on their own journey, but in, in, in barber school, I mean, we all come from different places, but we're all doing the exact same thing. Exactly we're all interested. We're all interested in the exact same thing. We're all learning different different things from different um, st other students, and um, so I enjoyed being around the people that uh, that were also in school with me. Some I didn't like. I don't know. I mean, it's definitely a grind making the, making that money to to stay afloat. Just because I mean, I definitely remember times when I sat back and looked at looked at, at my finances and was uh, seeing how tight it was going to be. Like I got to make a payment this month. I'm going to have to make. I see how much money I'm going to make this month. Yeah. It's like. No eating out this month, that's for sure. But now that it's over, I definitely would do it again. Yeah, I definitely remember like coin starting it for dollar menu. And you know, I, I got a credit card before cause we didn't have financial aid either. And it was like, yo, I'm gonna, like if I have to max out this credit card, I will. Yeah. And that's gonna be my <laughs> student loan, you know? So I definitely remember those days. So uh, one of the most common things I hear about barber schools, and I get people to message me all the time watching my channel and they say like, dude, thank goodness for your channel. I've learned everything I know how to cut hair by watching you. YouTube yep. and I'll tell people like hey man listen like I know that I know that sucks but it's pretty common yep don't be mad at your school I mean it is frustrating we were just talking before about not having any hair to cut in school and things like that but at the end of the day what I always tell people is like it's pretty it's pretty common uh, and the way we see it kind of is barber school is there to get you to pass the test yeah so their main objective is to teach you the state board the laws the the sanitation uh, specifically the state board haircut which is a stupid, no guard, <laughs> terrible haircut. But that's really all their main concern is because they want to make sure that you pass the test and get your license. And I always assume there was some type of kickback to the school for like how many people from their school get licensed. Mm -hmm. now, I don't know that for sure, but I would imagine in some way. So in that kind of on that topic, would you say that, you know, you felt prepared when you got out? Would you say you learned a lot from YouTube? You know, you talked about, you watched some of my channel. Do you think you learned half from there or are you ready to go into it and get after it? Yeah, I'd say, I'd say everybody, once they get to barber school, spends about their first uh, maybe one or two months, probably having a bit of an awakening, just not being exactly what you expected. And I, I, I definitely was no exception to that. I, I love my instructors. My instructors were great. But you, do, you definitely do have a little bit of a period of where you're just kind of like, uh, this isn't what I expected it. And um, like you're saying, there's a bit of a kind of do-it-yourself attitude where you got to get on YouTube and um, watch some tutorials. And I learned my first several months, I consumed a ton of tutorials yep. watching stuff. Because, I mean, when you finally do get a haircut, sit in your chair, I mean, you kind of have a, you have to have a, a decent idea of what you're about to do. And so watching those tutorials, just even if you don't expect yourself to do that haircut anytime soon, just watch it, see, you know, gather as much of information as you can, because you never know when somebody's going to sit there, sit down and say, you know, I want this, this type of haircut. And you can, you're going to be able, able to say, well, I watched that one video. Yeah. I think uh, I think I can pull this off. Well, definitely, if I do another class, I ain't saying you're not prepared already, but if I do another class, you should pop in. My main thing I teach is kind of going off of what you just said is I think when we're new and we're students, we have this idea that every haircut is so different, right? So like if a birthday walks in or if a different texture hair walks in or, or a taper versus a fade that like it's so different and we're, we almost start over, right? So it's mm -hmm. like, we start like we have no idea what we're doing mm -hmm. and it's really not that different. And so my main process of what I teach is like how to how to look at a haircut and kind of in parts and no matter what, like if like you wanted a burst fade or if you said, nah, let's just do a taper, like my clipper work steps are gonna be exactly the same. Mm -hmm. The shape's gonna be different. And then if you want some off the top with some texture, like that's one part of it. And so my entire class kind of process is how to look at every haircut and 
kind of break it down in those parts so that you, without having to go watch that YouTube video to familiarize yourself, you can just take any haircut and apply what you know to get the result you want. Cause that's the last thing you want, right? Is to basically get stumped when somebody walks in and you feel like, oh, I've never done this exact haircut. So I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So that's one of my main things I teach. I kind of asked this at the end, but so do you feel like you are prepared to go into a shop? Do you feel like you know, you're gonna go in and wing it for a minute, which is fine if that is the case. Not wing it, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I, no, I, I definitely would say, for first, I'm definitely, I definitely think I'm prepared for the test. I they, looked at your cuts, by the way, and they're definitely barbershop ready. I appreciate already, it. Already, so that's that's a plus. Um, I, I definitely think I'm ready for the test, first off. You know, we, we, we talk about maybe not learning as much as you would like to, but you definitely learn enough to go up there and pass that test. They, yeah. I'm more than ready for that. They, they make sure that you're ready to, um, you, you know, like you said, that, that haircut that you gotta do for your state exam. They make sure that you know exactly what you're doing and that you're ready for it. But as far as being ready for the shop, that's where it's a little bit more on you, I would say. Like we were talking about earlier, maybe like two or three months in, I got a little bit more comfortable. You're talking about school? Yeah, two or three yeah. months into school, I got a little more comfortable with cutting some friends. Like I started off cutting my closest friends, my brother, my dad. Those safe, those safe the people. The safe cuts. Yeah. My, my poor brother got messed up a time or two, that's for sure. But then you start to get a little more comfortable cutting hair and you start bringing some friends in and those friends send you a couple of people. And next thing you know, I mean, you're kind of forced into learning into cut yeah. hair. And so um, next thing you know, I mean, you're starting to see uh, a good bit of clients uh, come in and uh, that those are the guys that get you ready for the barbershop and people that you're not necessarily comfortable with because when you get in the shop you know I haven't experienced this yet but I'm, I'm definitely uh, prepared to not be comfortable with everybody that sits in my chair and so and I'm not gonna know everybody that sits in my chair yeah so. well and that'll never stop I talk in my classes a lot that one thing I take for granted sometimes is that I don't cut new people <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I'm cutting you for the first time and like you said oh my temples a little light and then I got into it and was like okay yep there it is <laughs> where like once you know once you know the person's hair it's so much easier yes and so you know you haven't even got to that point. You probably, maybe some people in barber school, yeah. you got to cut 10 times, but yeah. that is something that comes with it. But I also, like I said, I also kind of take for granted that I, I don't cut new people. So I kind of have it easy, mm -hmm. I guess I would say. That's something that will help. Once you start getting those regulars, and I would encourage you, like I said, maybe if you do get to come take a class, that'd be cool. But yeah. if not, just start to think about things a little more like, like, you know what? These haircuts aren't all that different. It's mm -hmm. just, this one's combed this way, this one's shaped this way, and everything's kind of the same. And that can kind of simplify that so that you don't get stumped when that one haircut walks in and you, you know because honestly what happens when you feel like that you do a worse job <laughs> you're like in your own head right it's like yeah. it's it's really not that different but you're treating it like it is and then you go over here and do a bad haircut one thing my uh my instructor would always say um, and another thing I haven't got to experience it, but he would always say that once you get in the shop, you're gonna get to a point where you finally start to build up some clientele or walk in, start to wanna come to you and you're doing five, six, seven, eight haircuts all back to back to back. And he, mm -hmm. he, he, he talks about a, uh, just a rhythm that you start to get into yeah. and where you're just, you know, every, every haircut starts to get easier. You're not really thinking that much, you're just doing. Well, it's the same thing, right? Like you haven't cut enough hair to get into a really solid system and routine. Mm -hmm. like. I can sit here and do any haircut and record and talk and turn around and grab the guard that I need and I'm not having to like think about it because yeah. I've, I've developed a system and so yeah that's obviously what comes the, the, the further you get the yeah. even more you know systems and, and processes you'll have and those are huge I mean that's those are all things that we teach is a lot of people come in at the spot that you're in and they, they try new stuff every haircut and they're getting new clippers all the time and I always tell people uh, you know it's, it's hard to get consistent when you're changing a bunch of stuff all the time it doesn't mean don't try some new stuff but you want to have some type of system because when you are that busy and you got one after the other after the other you can't be taking forever to try stuff out and you know wing it on the spot you need to have some type of systems because I, I explain it like this you're fresh out of high school so I don't know when you took chemistry in a couple years but uh in chemistry you got the scientific method and you have a bunch of controls which are things that don't change and you have variables and the idea is to change one variable and see what the outcome is and so i always teach that in haircutting and I, one of my classes i just popped in my head and they were like oh man you're getting deep but if you're changing clippers steps of your fade order that you do your haircut if you're changing all that every haircut like the chance of you getting a bad result is high yeah if i'm using the same clippers the same process on the same client on the same haircut the chances of me doing it well are pretty high so i always encourage people to, to find as many consistencies that they can keep that they can keep up with and and 
kind of keep things, like I said, don't be afraid to throw something in there every now and then, but you definitely want to try to keep some things constant so that you know, you know, you know you're going to use this clipper for this part, or you know you like to use this trimmer, you're not always, because that's another thing, you grab some clippers that don't fade very well, and now you just added, you know, like the, uh, the FX3 clipper I got, mm -hmm. it, it, the click lever on it is so different, and so, like if I grab that one day and started trying to cut my clients, it'd be a rough day. Mm -hmm. So like you, you throw that in the middle of your day, as a new barber, you go get this new clipper that cuts different, now you're you're way off. So you just gotta watch that. Yeah. So you're talking about the state board, how you said you're feeling prepared, um, and obviously guys, every state is gonna have different requirements, different style state board, and correct me if I'm wrong, but in Kentucky, I do have a couple newish barbers here that just did this. So in Kentucky, we take a written test that I believe is like 60 questions? 50. 50, okay. And a lot of those questions are over state laws, mm -hmm. and then, like not a lot, but like a quarter of them maybe, like yeah. I think 12. Mm -hmm. And then the rest obviously are over the entire book. Uh, so more or less, no matter where you guys are from, you're gonna have, you may not have a written, I think most places have a written. I think the practical is what some places don't have. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're going to have some type of written test that's going to be over the entire book, basically. Start to finish, probably I would have to guess, no matter where you're from, that you're going to have some law stuff in there because you obviously need to know that. And then in Kentucky, we have a practical test that, like I said, you don't get to use guards. You have to do a shave with the 14 steps. And uh, you guys that watch the channel already know I'm pretty, pretty non-old school, so uh, I am totally against how we do our state board yeah I think it's a very uh, invalid way to test if people are ready to be barbers I think the, the written isn't a bad thing but I think the way that we test people to, to do haircuts is absolutely terrible and does not at all show if they can do it they don't even care if the haircuts any good mm -hmm. so in that sense you, you think you're ready for the written fine you got no concerns there yeah I mean it's I a think, lot to study for uh, that's that's another <laughs> thing that's another thing that being fresh out of high school I think helps with you're I better think, at studying and yeah exams it's, it's and, not yeah. it's, it's not True. unusual to me I've been studying for yeah. the last 12 years <laughs> a lot of years uh, yeah and so I think that's uh, something that older guys have to like readjust yeah. themselves to but no for me personally I, I think uh, I'm definitely gonna be spending I got three weeks until I gotta go take it and so uh, I definitely feel like I got some time to sit back and, and read over my book um, make sure I'm ready for it. There's probably about 500 possible questions that could be on it. And so you really you really do have a lot to study, but you just gotta make sure that you know, you know you're ready for just 50 of them, so. Yeah. Here's my best tip. This, this is for everybody watching and for you. If you go to the back of the book where all the yeah. definitions are, obviously the words that are defined that are in the back of the book are gonna be your most common you know, things that you're gonna come across. It's gonna be all the different chemical terminology. It's gonna be all the sanitation terminology. So I think that's your, if you if you had to like crash course study last minute, I think I would recommend, I mean, just nailing all of the terms and definitions in the back. Yeah. I think that's your best bet to like safely, easy, easiest way possible to get most of the important stuff. Because you're gonna have, like I said, like anything that's significant is a definition term. You know, like porosity or pH balance or all those type of questions that you're gonna have, those are the most important parts of the book. So I've, that's what I always tell people is if, if you don't know what to study, that's probably your best bet. So take the test in three weeks and I already know the answer to this, but do you have a shop you're going to? What is it? How did you find it? Tell us uh, whatever you want about it. Maybe we'll throw it up on the uh, throw the IG up on the screen for everybody. Absolutely, it's um, so for uh, I'm going to be working in Bowling Green, Kentucky, at a place in brand new shop called Slice Barber Lounge. I'm really excited. Uh, it's super super new. Uh, I got to know the owner because uh, we were actually in school at the same time. He was working on his license so he could work in his shop. You don't have to have a license to own it, but you do have to have a license to to work in it. And so he's working on his, and he offered uh, he bounced the idea off to me and offered me a spot in his shop when it got open. And so um, after you know checking it out and uh, seeing his vision, I was really excited about it. And um, so I, I, I jumped on the opportunity. And so I'm really excited to get in there. Uh, it's really nice. Definitely go check it out. Yeah, you just showed me. It's definitely, uh, well, funny enough, I've been talking about since I opened this, like, man, you know what? Bowling Green could use a shop like this. You know, there's no new school, like everything's real old and the old white guy barber shop with yeah, the absolutely. red, white, and blue. And yeah. you know, that's, that's what we have here. That's what's in Bowling Green. And so I've jokingly said like, man, I could open a, a clutch there and it would work. Uh, and I ain't trying to say that's what that 
that is, but in the, <laughs> it's in the idea of like a new new style shop. Yeah. You know, you guys are going to be doing the new style stuff, social media, and uh, you know whatever. And uh, I think that'll be. I can tell you from experience that it's an easy way to win when everybody else is doing honestly nothing. <laughs> they're not posting. They're not learning. They're not doing new. So yeah, I think you'll have I think you'll have some success. There. All right. So that's pretty much it about the barber school talk. Do you have any? If you could talk to yourself before you started, do you have any tips, pointers, things you wish you knew, things you wish you did different? Anything you just want anybody looking into barber school? Do you think they should know? Definitely. One thing that I wish I would have uh, wish would have known was like definitely you can't be afraid to just jump in and cut hair because that's really the only way you can get better is just cutting hair. I definitely, watching other guys at school definitely helped, but cutting hair is the way, the way you get yep. better the fastest. And uh, I was a little timid when I first started school. I didn't want to mess anybody up, but um, you know, eventually you just got to accept that it may happen. You just got to, you got to jump in there and do it for the well, sake of your learning. And that's the place to do it. Yeah, that's, that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. <laughs> when you get in the shop, now you're not supposed to mess people up. Yeah. But when you're in school, that's that's what you do there. I hate to say that, but that, it's kind of I mean, even my even my instructors were honest about that. They were like, "If you're ever gonna if you're ever gonna mess up, here's the place to do it because it's not attached to your name. It's, it's it's us." So we had a sign at our school that said, "You know, all work done by students." Yep. You know, whatever. It's kind of a disclaimer to say, "Hey," like <laughs> it should just say, "Hey, you might get messed up." <laughs> yeah, that's a valid point. And that's what my teacher actually made lanyards at one point that said, "Just cut the damn hair." <laughs> and my teacher used to say that because you get too caught up, you're over here scared. And I mean, f for good reason, right? Like I don't think. Think any of us want to mess anybody up I mean there's times I do but you know most of us want to do a good job and and there's other people in school that maybe are better than us and uh, you know you don't want to look bad you don't want to go hey I don't know how to do this you know it's just naturally how we all are so but that is that is your time to mess up because once you get in the shop there's a, there's a total different expectation and you know I remember scenarios in school where somebody would you know I remember specifically one of my guys I don't remember the whole story but more or less instead of running like a three guard he used like a blade or something and he cut a dude's hair like off you know like off off and the guy was not happy obviously and the teacher was like hey this is a barber school like that's the risk you have when you come in here and once you get in the shop you don't have that anymore yeah like it's not that i like say you come work for me and you mess somebody up it's not that i wouldn't have your back but it's like the client's getting a free haircut it's mm -hmm. it's on it's on you at this point it's not on them yeah and so you lose that kind of that safety net once you're in a real shop so yeah get it out of the way while you're in school go ahead and mess up you're gonna mess up we all did we all uh, didn't know nothing and we're bad at haircuts and i remember a few of mine it's cool <laughs> did, did you uh did you take much many pictures and, and things like that while you're in school uh yeah I, I try to take as many pictures as possible it's it, it's tough to take pictures of stuff that maybe like you know yeah. is could have been better as you just you're, you're, you're figuring it out not what you wanted to look like yeah yeah i mean and i, I remember a lot of and then the, another uh, kind of block i had to jump over was learning to just post it it's like just get yeah. it out there i just distracted myself I forgot where I was going. Yeah, well, it's just tough, I, and I get it, but I'll tell you, when I was in school, I didn't. Now I look back, and I have, I probably have 20 pictures from my first haircuts before I started school, in school, and then I might only have 20 more from my first shop. I just did not really document it well, and uh, matter of fact, I'm supposed to cut a guy that I went to school with, and I was thinking, man, I'll make, you know, the video will be cool. I'll put pictures of me and him in there from school, and I went back to my barber school days, and I didn't have nothing, mm -hmm. and so that's one thing I would tell people watching, if, if you do go to school i even have people talk to me about youtube like eventually they want to get into youtube and i tell them dude be a barber school youtuber like there's probably a lot more barber students watching youtube than than barbers and they would love to see that you know you make a you make a video about how you didn't learn nothing in school that day and they watch it and go man okay i'm not the only one you know so people will relate to you but youtube for me is a way to document things and so like that's one of my biggest tips i would have for you is you know even if you don't post it take pictures then when you're you know i'm 10 years in I do have a few pictures, but man, now I get to go back and go, oh my gosh, I was terrible. <laughs> and I've improved so much, you know, but you won't have that if you don't, you know, take any pictures or document anything the whole time you're you're in there. This is one thing I'm, I really want to work on is learning how to texture the top. Yeah. Most of the time I only do point cutting. So, you know, Josh O.P., you know who that is? Yeah. So I do a little bit of work with him now. I still, I'm still with Tune, and that's the main thing that I do. Uh, but like I'm teaching at Josh's show in the UK this, uh, in October, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. 
And then I just found out I'm gonna be teaching with him at the Vegas Expo, which is crazy. But I've spent a lot of time with him lately and he does such intricate scissor stuff. And then one of the things that he was teaching is, most of the time there's a bunch of texture, it's, it's just styled that way. Like I could take your hair right now and scrunch it with a diffuser and make it super wavy and textured looking, or I can blow it totally straight. Yeah. And it's gonna look straight. So a lot of what you see, is more the, the products used and like what they did to style it. And I can, I can blunt cut or point cut and style it flat or textured, mm -hmm. regardless of what it really is. So don't think too much into that. If, if I was gonna tell, like if, if, if what you're looking for at the end of the day is more textured looking haircuts, not necessarily how to put more texture in, then I would focus on some of your styling. Gotcha. What products you're using, how you're styling. Like I said, I could put stuff in this and just scrunch it like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can even see when I just do my hand like that. Yeah. The difference. Right, so that's that's what a lot of it comes down to and he teaches that because a lot of things people ask for in his class to learn It's like texture texture texture. Well, he'll do a whole crazy looking cut all blunt and then just style it messy mm. And it's like oh you didn't texturize that at all So that's something I took away because I'm always like point cutting everything which point cutting obviously is gonna gonna help because it's gonna make it not so even mm -hmm. But it's also it's it's not all about that. You know, I use I'm biased because I work for him But before I worked for him this was my favorite product, but the 245 plus is just crazy. Yeah, I've been seeing that in your videos. Dude, it just, it's its really like a good messy texture look and it also, you can, like I have it in my hair right now, I could i could spike my hair straight up and it would stay right now. Yeah. I can move it around, like it'll, it'll hold that texture all day. And it's, I don't know, it's just that dry look, clay, it just, just, just uh, style super nice. Well, shit, I'm gonna have to come down there. Maybe I, maybe we can uh, revisit this. I'll come get a cut from you in the shop that would and be we'll awesome. document it. That would be awesome. All right, should've put that on there. We'll, we'll say that at the end. So we got into this, we got into this game and it was like, it's kind of like when you start cutting hair, you gotta cut kids, you gotta cut white people, black people, Mexicans, whatever. You can't really have a thing. Yeah. You gotta do whatever it is until something sticks. I mean, look at that. I just had it come totally straight. Yeah. And then, you know, I can just mess that up. But so we got into this industry like as 245, this is before I was around really. And we made shave gel and then we made hair products and then we came out with the charger mat and then that really took off. And we kind of shifted to like only innovative products. Mm -hmm. So when I joined them, I was like, let's make capes with Tum on them. Let's make combs. Like, cause I was the guy that would buy all that. Yeah. Like if it says Tum on it, I'll buy it. And they were like, nah, we kind of just, we only really put our name on stuff that's unique. Yeah. And so we got away from the styling products because how many, how many styling products are out there, right? Mm -hmm. And so we got away from it. Well, it was like by far my favorite product. Like loved how it looked in my hair and uh, other barbers did too. And so yeah, like three years later, we finally put it back out. But it's like by far the best. And then like once, once we get it close, I can add some like texture powder. I don't know if you ever use powder. Oh yeah, we the powder will kind of dry it out. We throw that in everything. It's yeah, cool. <laughs> See, I don't like it by itself though, because I don't feel like it, it holds enough by itself. I think it needs a little like a base like this. Yeah. So I like put the clay in, comb it through, and then you can just like scrunch it, get it to do what you want. I love the pot idea. That was really good. Oh, it's killer, man. I love it too. I want to get one of those. And you can swap them out like for whatever you're using. Yeah. When you were cutting, did you did you always style before they got up? Most of the time. Maybe not like now I'm more likely to do like a full blow dry diffuser. Yeah. Like honestly, I didn't know that your hair would, would pop this much, or I maybe would have <laughs> done either. a diffuser. Because it didn't, I mean, I could even make it look crazier with a diffuser. But yeah, I do I always at least have product and give them a, a finished look, you know what I mean? Yeah. Cause that's something I don't know. When you do get to one to charge more, it's like how can you charge more and you're not like you're leaving people with like wet hair mm -hmm. or like, you know what I mean? Just, it's just like hanging in their face. Yeah. It's not even, that's not finished. Like that's not a finished cut. And so like back to like separating yourself. I can probably tell you from the get go, half of your shop ain't gonna be doing full styles and yeah. educating them about here's how you use the diffuser. Here's how you do like put this product in first and then put like, you start doing that. That's some stuff that can set you apart. So that's something I've always done is teach them about products, show them where they can get it, how much to use, whatever it is. You just let them leave, you know, with none of that knowledge. And, and you know, I, one of the things I hate the worst is seeing clients out and they don't even like you make it look fire and then they leave and then they don't even do nothing to Throw it. Put a hat on. Yeah. So it's like part of it. The, sometimes they do that because they don't know how to make it look like this. Yeah. And so that's that's a huge tip to like set yourself apart a little bit is to uh, make sure everybody's style.
All right, guys, that is it for the cut. Tell them where they can find you on Instagram and the shop, too. So, Tay Pointer, I'm Tay on Point. That's T A Y E dot on dot P O Y N T on Instagram. And that's your last name, right? Yes, well, sir. Well, not Point, but. Yeah, it's Mr. That's a play, that's a play on your last name. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you guys make sure you go check him out. And if you guys want to see me, go to Bowling Green once he gets in the shop and get a cut. That's some big trust right there. Yes, sir. But leave me a comment down below and let me know if you want me to do that, and we will go visit him here shortly. But that's it for the video, guys. I hope it was helpful. If if you are looking into going to barber school, make sure you guys click right over there and check out my interview with DC if you want to know some more.